This video is sponsored by Decal Works, offering 10% off all graphics to retail customers. Use the promo code RX10 at decalmx.com to receive 10% off your graphics. How's it going, everybody? I'm Chris Kiefer. This is Racer X Films, and we are out here in Wildemar, California at a private facility. I'm not going to tell you where we're at, but for those that know, no. I'm sure in the video you'll see things that you might want to be like, oh, I know where that's at. Don't worry about it. We're not going to tell you. It's confidential. We would love to tell you, but then we have to kill you, so then you're not going to be able to ride anyway. So KX450 build. My man, Trent Lopez, he is our sales rep at Racer X. This is his bike. And uh, I didn't know about this thing until about three weeks ago when I was like, okay, I'm going to go ride this thing, give you guys some info about it. There's a lot of work done to this. I would say as far as bikes that I have done so far for Racer X, this looks to be the most in detail as far as little bits and pieces that are on a motorcycle. We have got a power powder coated frame, clamps, what else? Wheels. Wheels. We got, I like to think for this guy right here, I always go look. For me, when I build bikes, there's got to be whys. There's certain things that I like that need to be on a bike that, why am I doing this to this bike? So Trent is going to go over this build, why he did the things that he did, and uh, give you some guys some background on this bike. So go ahead, Trent. Thank you, Chris. Uh, when it came to this bike, there's a lot of things I wanted to do. And as Chris says, there's whys to every bike. For me, it's almost why not? Why not do this? But really, there's so much that Kawasaki did really right with this bike. But I just wanted to compound on that and try and do more if I can and make it better and make it more comfier for someone like me, a vet rider of a larger size, but still likes to get out there and have a good time and push the limits. The stock stuff just doesn't work for me. Suspension doesn't work. The clutch doesn't work. There's just a couple things. Now, these bikes have plenty of power, more than I'm sure I will ever need, but that doesn't mean you can't touch on other things. Um, originally, the plan was that we were going to make this a super fast bike and, you know, put the piston and do the ECU, but then after riding it, putting in time, it it really for me just didn't need that. So why not style it? Make it great. Um, so to start off, of course, obviously the Cowries look so much better when you put a little love into the frame, the swing arm. So we got that powder coated. Um, Jerry down at Illuminart does a fantastic job. He turned this around pretty quick for us. Everything's powder coated on that, um, as well as the master brake cylinders and the calipers, as well as the lugs on the bottom of the forks are all anodized. So that way rock stuff are gonna fly at them. You're not gonna get that shipping and it looks really great with that black color. So they do a great job. I was really happy with that. It turned out fantastic and that adds a lot of style and a lot of flair to it. Um, he also anodized the actual uppers on the forks those look great as well that color that bronze color to it they do a fantastic job and it really helps and um, it'll protect the forks in the long run as well um, so that's that when it comes to protection obviously too uh, p3 makes some really sweet carbon fiber pieces that we put on here such as the gas tank cover and the skid plate um, it's great for protection and it looks good you can't go wrong with carbon fiber well you can but not on this one so we made sure we got that on there now touching back on the frame um, and the chassis, the whole entire main part of the bike, uh, we have the SCP engine mounts. This is the KX450 kit for this, the motor mounts and the lower hangers there. Um, that just makes it a more pleasant, comfortable ride compared to the stock motor mounts. A lot of guys are actually uh, in stock trim making mounts because so many people are coming into this market, but these guys do a really great job and uh, I'm really impressed with them. They make the ride feel a little bit better. Um, we'll give you more feedback after the actual initial ride and Kiefer will give you his thoughts as well, but that's just something that I feel super comfortable throwing on there and it just makes sense to me. Um, now I know you're probably looking at this bike and you're thinking, man, everything looks good, but what's with the fruity colored pegs there? Well, actually I wanted to do something that stands out. Flow makes some really good pegs. Um, you'll have a really hard time actually trying to come off of these things, but I wanted to add a little color. Now, if you notice, not only are the pegs that kind of that jet fuel neon chrome color, but so is our sprocket and so is our actual bolt kit on this thing. I wanted it to not clash, but kind of go with little pieces, even with the bluing on the exhaust that happens over time and the lower engine mounts, it makes a really good kind of feel and it brings it all together versus just throwing something out there that didn't make sense. So. I thought that was cool. It adds a little style, but the pegs are actually very useful and they make for very good pegs. So um, while we're still on the subject, uh, the stock clamps are just fine on this thing, but we made a change. I like to hit corners because let's be real, I don't really get too much air. So we did the 22 mil uh, ride engineering clamps. Those are a lot more comfortable. I feel like I get less head shake and I get a little bit more um, 
comfortability on that, as well as the rear linkage from Ride Engineering that we added a 1.25 mil. That's better for corners, uh, traction, acceleration, which is really what I need mostly. Uh, I put a lot of weight to the ground, so having that makes a lot of sense. Um, but it's great, uh, especially in corners when I'm riding the back instead of dancing, it feels like it kind of just sets in place and it kind of follows and tracks where I want it to go versus just being all over the place. And that makes it good for me. So I really enjoy that. Those are fantastic pieces that you can add to once again, make your stock bike even better. Now, when it came to designing this bike, uh, I had a tough time because it's it's a cow it already looks so good as it is and then you've got those factory guys over at the pro circuit team or the monster energy kawasaki team that just those graphics they do such a good job so it's hard to follow that up um, but the guys at moto cuts helped me and allowed me to design my own kit and do my own flair and i think it really came out really well I'm super excited because it's hard to find guys that let you put in that type of custom detail. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, as you can tell, we've got the carbon fiber on the Racer X, which was a cool touch. Even the front number plate, uh, as well as the gold chrome inlays on the numbers. Because if you're not looking good, you're not riding good. That's just how it works. I don't make the rules. I'm sorry. Now, uh, when it comes to the key points on the bike, uh, I hear that all the time. There's four important things that you should master on the bike and that's your brakes front and rear your clutch and your throttle once you master that you're in control of the bike at all times right so what's really important is comfortability when it comes to that uh, Renthal hooked us up with the FB36. This is their new handlebar. So this is made out of a component they call Zerillium. Uh, I'm not even gonna pretend that I know the table of contents to know what that's even made out of. All I know is it's as good as the twin walls, as thick and strong, but ultra lightweight. And it feels really, really good. I could swing that thing like a bat. So I'm hoping I could swing this thing pretty well. We'll find out. Now, when it comes to braking, you guys have heard this story before, I need a little bit more. Um, I put more weight to the ground, more speed, I'm flying, so I need that extra brake power. So we went with the Galfer kit, the front and rear rotors, as well as the steel braided brake lines. That works really well for me. Um, there's no confusion on that. It brakes are brakes, you would think, but no, the Galfer does a really good job and um, I'm super stoked to have those on the bike as well. The guys over at ArcXL gave us these uh, A60s. What's really cool about these, and I'm sure a lot of people actually don't know this, the A60s are nice because there's no face to the wheel. So what that means is they don't accumulate mud and extra debris and the wheels don't have to spin and over calculate or over rotate for the mass on it. So all the dirt, the mud, for the most part slides off. It makes for really good for motocross, supercross. Probably you wouldn't notice the difference, but it's nice to have that. And um, I feel like this bike with those wheels really fits that motif of motocross. So the guys over at Pro Circuit, big shout out to them. They gave us the Tie 6 full exhaust. That drops a couple pounds from that huge thing that comes stock with this. Sorry, it is what it is, but it makes it look better and you get better performance out of that. Um, shout out to Cherbies because they give us the plastics as well as the chain slide and glide kit. Looks really good. Um, they have tons of factory plastics that match up just perfectly. Usually sometimes they aren't, you know, Plastic kits don't really match up that great. Asherby's does a really good job with their engineering, so everything matches up perfectly. Um, and then back to ride engineering, they gave us a bunch of cool little bits and pieces to add that flair to make the bike personally mine, personally yours. You can do the same from engine oil plugs, the axle block kit, brake clevis, all those types of things that just kind of add that little piece de resistance to it. We put some uh, Dunlop MX-33s on here because that's just the tire. That's just the best choice all around. You can do so much with this. And so I really enjoy Dunlops and you get the sweet, sweet yellow sticker. You're not factor if you don't have that. Everybody knows that. Um, the guys at SDG, Jeff actually did this custom seat for us. Um, when he did the seat, he had an idea in mind and he put it together and it took him hours to sew this thing. I didn't think sewing was that difficult. Apparently it is. And this is easily one of the coolest, most comfortable seats I've ever seen. It's not very often you get style, function and form. So uh, shout out to the guys at SDG for that. And then last but not least, obviously we have Racetech suspension on this. Chris Riesenberg and the guys over at Racetech do a lot for us. Um, they make easily some of the best suspension that I've ever ridden. There's tons of guys that make great suspension, um, but they're local if you're here in Southern California. Uh, gold valves, you know the saying, better body resistant, resistance plus your feel, gold valves. That is what it is. So we threw some of those on here and we'll let you know our thoughts on that. All right, if you made it through all that, I don't know how many minutes we're in right now, but if you made it through all that, this is my guy's bike. This garage build is more of a custom build for my guy Trent. So I'm gonna ride a little bit, see how it is, but obviously the suspension's not gonna be built for me. 
um, his tire choice, all these things are customized to what he wants, right? So it's cool for me. What I like to call track toughness, if you follow what I do over on Kiefer Ring Testing, is to see how well this Kawasaki is on different tracks. We have a jumpy track here. That might help me, actually, because now, Trent, what are you weighing in at? 250 right now. He's 250. So 250, buck 70, little difference. But jumpy track, it'll hold up. We're going to talk about this machine, what the Kawasaki does great, and we're going to talk a little bit about Trent's little pieces that he added. Look, this thing is beautiful. And I would do stuff differently, but it's not my bike. It's Trent's bike. His stuff looks clean. I really, when I pulled up to the, the track today, I looked at it, I was like, first thing I noticed was like the rainbow-ish sprocket with the front mount, the bolts, little details that I like to look at when I go walk the pits at a Supercross. So there's some of that on this thing. We'll get back to you. We're going to ride a little bit. There's a lady behind this camera that's been waiting about 45 minutes really patiently. We're waving at her. She's not waving back, so that means she's mad. So we're going to go riding. See you in a minute. All right, guys, we're done for the day. A little bit of a dry day, but it reminded me a lot of going to Colorado. We have a place in Colorado, and we ride on a lot of farmland. It's kind of like that out here. I enjoyed it. A lot of jumps, as you will see in the video, of course. But for me, this is actually Trent's bike, so it's not set up for me. Of course, this is all due to what he wanted and what he felt he needed on his bike build. But I can relate to a couple things here. So for how big he is, the Race Tech suspension was actually pretty plush and softer feeling for me. I'm 170 pounds, Trent's 250, so I appreciate how much comfort I can get out of this Racetech fork. Another thing that I've had a lot of time on was ride engineering clamps. 22 millimeters, if you guys are having a little bit of prob problem with getting into corners initially, I always call that area one. Area one of the corner is initial lean. The 22 mil clamps are very good in that direction. I get a little bit of an easier lean coming into the corner, and then I have that traction that I want because the rear end squats with that right engineering link. So I'm familiar with that, I can respect that, and I like that change in this bike. Overall, the engine, I'm kind of glad he didn't really do much to that. It's more of an easier to ride engine. When I get these emails from guys, I always say, hey man, the Kawasaki is really good if you're a vet guy, or if you like an easy to ride 450. It doesn't have a lot of grunt, down low, but it's really broad and long, so I can appreciate that. The Pro Circuit muffler just kind of enhances that, makes it a little bit more linear down low, and then broader through the mid-range to the top end. So kudos to Trent for putting that on. I would put the insert in. I told Trent that already, so he might do that later. But last but not least for me, things that I feel, Renthal Fat Bar 36, so had some time on that bar. Dampening quality. I would say is a little bit better than a fat bar itself, but for me, the vibration quality, anti-vibration quality of this bar is really good. So if you have a Kawasaki, you feel a little bit of vibration through your hands, or you have a KTM or anything like that, this bar is really good for that. So I like that quality. I actually talked a little bit of trash on Trent's bar band. It's a little bit of a freestyle-ish, ape hanger-ish bar band, but Trent's a bigger guy than me, so. He has a little bit of a more roomier cockpit than I'm used to. So overall, had a good time on this bike. Track toughness is very good. Wasn't really rough today, but a lot of big jumps. Had no problem doing those. So fairly comfortable, comfortable day for me. So today was actually my first day riding my Kawasaki after it's all done. I've rode this bike in stock trim, and it was just fine. Obviously, I needed to make a couple upgrades. But now riding it how it is, it is so much more comfortable. Now I use that word because it's not a race machine. I mean, granted, yes, that's what these are built for and a lot of guys do that. But to me, I wanted something where I could ride. I put in a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, not only on myself, but on the bike. And I feel like the upgrades I did here really make me a more competent rider. Even though I probably went over the handlebars like two or three times a day, it's a lot less than what would have usually happened. Um, number one, after trying it, the suspension, very, very comfortable, super plush, but I would like to go stiffer on the front end. If you're a guy like me with a little bit of weight, there's nothing wrong with that um, because if you come down front end and that thing just totally 
goes all the way to the bottom of the forks, yeah, well, it's not the most fun thing. So um, that's one thing I would change. One thing that I forgot to mention in, earlier in the video is that we put the Twin Air Power Flow kit in here. Uh, the back screen comes out, the aluminum cage goes in, uh, more throttle response. It's nice. I noticed it. It worked really well for me. Another thing we put in here was the Henson Billet Clutch Kit. Um, what that does is it pretty much just increases the durability. Uh, Kawasaki stock is pretty lean and it's got a lot of on off on that clutch. Now with that clutch kit, it makes it a little bit more linear on that pull. So um, that's something that I enjoy. Uh, a lot of people, sometimes they do like that, they don't. I enjoy it, I think it was a great choice to make. So back earlier in the video, I mentioned that when it comes to your controls, you've got your clutch, your front and rear brake and your throttle. Um, to revisit those, my clutch and brake levers, uh, those are made by ASV. Those are actually really comfortable. Uh, the brake lever, the front brake lever, it's one of the shorties. So when you grab, it's really easy just to one finger that thing. I know Kiefer will make that joke for you. I will not, I will be an adult today. Um, they're really comfortable and they've got that nice little bend in and you can just kind of set your finger there and it automatically goes there and there's no hesitation there. So that's one thing that you really have to make sure you're comfortable with and I enjoy it. So to wrap this thing up, uh, we put a lot of hours into building this thing and um, I really enjoy it. There are probably some things down the line that I will have to change, but as it sits now, I'm really excited. I love the way it turned out. I don't think I would have done anything differently, but with a lot of this stuff, it's trial and error and um, it rode beyond my expectations. Uh, we will have a parts list and everything. If these are some things that you want to throw on your bike as well, I highly recommend it. All these guys that jumped in on this, we super appreciate your help and they offer quality goods and you cannot go wrong with anything that we've chosen or anything that you might choose. Um, but again, when it comes to these builds, we like to do our own thing and put our own heart and sense of style into these things. And um, this is mine. Unfortunately, it'll never look as it did earlier today, but that's all right because that's what I expected out of a dirt bike and I did it the way I wanted to do it. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. We'll turn it over to Kiefer and he'll close us out. All right, guys. That's it. You heard Trent. It's his bike. He's going to go ride. I'm going to make him ride this thing more than once a week. Okay. So if you're in Southern California, you got a dirt bike, you better be riding this thing, especially if it looks this good. It's not a show bike. It's a dirt bike. We're going to ride this sucker, right? Trent, say yes. I hope he does. And uh, of course, if you guys want to see more videos, more great content, go to racerxonline.com. And don't forget, RacerX print edition, it's still out there. Go subscribe. Get a t-shirt, stickers. If you see me at the track, I've got Racer X stickers in my van, so come see me. Don't forget, subscribe. Not that much money. We'll see you at the track. Trent.